Hey everybody, it's Alex here from Lighthouse Baptist Church. We are back with D Groups. Uh, we is week 44, so you guys are moving along through the year. Um, this is going to be the last of our November study. It got pushed a little bit, uh, but it's on relationships. Specifically, this one is parenting. So the title for today's message is Keys for Godly Parenting. Now the memory verses uh, were... Wives, submit to your husbands as unto the Lord, and husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. At least that was the last memory verse. Um, if you're looking for a good memory verse about children, uh, Ephesians 6.4 is one that you guys ought to learn. Ephesians 6.4 is a great one. So, uh, introduction. Um, today, we're going to look at a few key insights. Um, I assure you, this is not exhaustive. Um, these are just important things you need to know, need to do, need to be aware of if you're going to be raising children. Uh, number one, we have to start with the correct understanding of children. Um, there is a thought that came out uh, a while back, and it was tabula rusa, and the idea was blank slate. The idea is that children are born inherently neutral, uh, that they don't have sin, uh, that they don't have anything they've done. And because of that, uh, we then have to blame everything around them for corrupting them. And it's not the kid's fault, it's the scenario. It's, uh, as Adam would say, the woman that you gave me. Um, but we blame everything except ourselves. And so I, I would tell you that's a dangerous teaching. Uh, people are not naturally neutral or naturally good. Instead, the Bible says the natural state of people since Adam and Eve has been sinful, has been sinful. And this is true even if you're raising children. And if you have children, everybody said, amen. That's right. So um, Psalm 58, 3, it says, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. It says, but children are bless." I need you guys to know, though, that children are blessings and not curses. Um, although our children naturally are inclined to sin, as they grow, as they are able to talk and do things, they are naturally defiant, they naturally uh, have to be taught, have to be instructed, have to be uh, brought in, because they don't have a good basis. They are naturally uh, estranged from God. They naturally sin. Now, there's a very important thing when we talk about how, although that's the case, children are blessings and not curses. Uh, Psalm 127 has a beautiful portion on this. It says, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. It says, happy is the man that hath a quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but he shall speak with the enemies in the gate. They shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Uh, so... They are a blessing from God. God says uh, they are like arrows in the hand of a mighty man, and happy is he that has a quiver full of them. And then the point is, though, that they just require training. They require, first off, salvation, but they require training. Uh, Proverbs 22, 6, I'm going to paraphrase it. It says, uh, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old he will not depart from it. Um, and that's the point. We have to train kids up to be what we want them to be. So that leads us directly into number two. We must give kids direction. We must give them direction. We need to give kids a chance to learn while they're under our roof. Uh, that way we can teach them while they are willing to listen. Uh, Proverbs 4.1 says this. It says, Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. We have to encourage them, hey, you need to listen to what I have to tell you. You need to look this way. We're trying to show you what's right. As a matter of fact, if you don't do that, Proverbs 29, 15 says this. The end of the verse says, But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Children do not parent themselves well. We have to be the parents. Now, number three, we must provide discipline. That comes along with being a parent is discipline. Uh, Proverbs 22.14 says, Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, uh, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So the Bible tells us we are to discipline our kids. I personally believe that includes, at times, physical discipline. That includes uh, spankings or whatever. That includes uh, 
them to realize, no, this is not going to be tolerated. This is going to have to stop. Um, that said, uh, God even disciplines his children. I don't know if you think about it that way, but Hebrews 12, 6, and 7 says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and he scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God deals with you, or dealeth with you, as with sons. For what son is he with whom the Father chasteneth not? So in other words, if God doesn't punish you when you get off, if he doesn't chasten you, if he doesn't bring you back uh, and off the wrong path, he shows that you're not his child. Um, Proverbs 29, 15, it says, The rod and reproof give wisdom. The rod and reproof, that is discipline and reproof, give wisdom. It says, But a child left to himself bringeth his mother shame. That's exactly what we read in the second one. So it's obvious we must be doing discipline. All right, number four. It can't be all discipline, by the way. Here's where it comes out. We must exhort and show them grace as well. So Proverbs 6, 4, it says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but instead we're supposed to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. God is so gracious, and he's gracious with us, and we need to express that as well with our children. Uh, Proverbs 20, verse 11 said, Even a child is known by his doings, whether they be pure and whether they be right. Uh, we can encourage kids to do what's good, to do what's right, and that is an important part of raising children. It's not always, I'm just going to clobber you when you do something wrong. It's, here's what you need to do the right way. When you do it, I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to tell you you did a great job. Not always, but I'm going to make sure you know that I uh, appreciate you doing the right thing as it goes forward. But we also have to discipline. So number five it says, we must remember theology starts at home. And that sounds weird. Maybe we don't know the word theology very well. It literally just means the study of God. The study of God starts at home. And you, you may think that sounds odd. Um, but uh, you have to understand what your kids think about you, what they see about you, reflects what they think about God. Um, I want to tell you that Christianity cannot just be a mental exercise. You have to live it. Um, they need to see you live the words that you proclaim. Look what God had to say about Abraham. This is so cool. This is what one day I hope God will say about me. Uh, Genesis 18, 19, it says, For I know him, talking about Abraham, he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. So God said, look at Abraham. Why would I not tell him what I'm looking to do? This guy is going to train his kids up to know me, to love me, to look at what's right, to do justice. But how would God describe you? How would God describe me? Is that how God would describe us? And if not, that's our fault. We are the parents. It doesn't matter what... Uh, upbringing you had, if you have a child, you are responsible to showing good theology, good uh, expression of God at home. You are his ambassador, whether you know it or not. Now, I have to tell you, God requires families to teach their children about the Lord. Uh, that's what he requires. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, it says, Hear, O Israel. This is the Jewish Shema. This is their, their most famous thing. It says, The Lord our God is one Lord, and it says, and thou shalt love the Lord your God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. So God wants a real love towards him. It's not just, you know, yeah, God, you're one, and then nothing. We have to really love him. But then it goes on and it says this. It says, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. So, oops, we got to learn God's word, and it's got to be in our heart. Um, it says, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, Thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way, and thou shalt, uh, when thou liest down and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them as a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. God expresses the importance of us inundating our children with the truth. Um, you know, we have to understand education is 
a very, very vital thing. And what you educate your kids in is what you will lead them towards. And so if you educate your kids in the Lord, you are leading them in that direction. Um, now, if we let only uh, the media and the school system and, and the general populace educate our kids, if we only let them tell us what is important, they're not going to come out being unbiased. They're going to come out secular. And we have to incorporate this is who God is. This is how he wants you to understand him. This is what God has done. And we have to show our kids how serious and how real God is. Now, God being a heavenly father is represented best by the actions of earthly parents. Now, that leads to the question, how does God treat you? Obviously, he will make you get things right. He may weigh heavy on you if you sin. But how much does he bring peace and grace and mercy to you? And we have to remember that with our children as well. And so that said, how should we teach our own children? If that's how God teaches us, how should we teach our own children? Now, these are my keys for godly parenting. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure somebody uh, even more qualified than me could have got up and given them, but this is what the scripture has to say. Uh, and obviously, there are more nuanced things, and there's a ton more to talk about. But as a good rule of thumb, these are five keys for godly parenting. Thank you. Have a great day.